Hey, how's it going? Good to see you again. Rick T, Outdoor Adventure, and Billy. Come on, Billy, come here, say hello. Come here, come here. Come on, come say hello. Come and say hello. It's not like you to stay away from the camera, is it? Come here, come here, come and say hello, come and say hello. Yeah, Billy's here with us anyway. So, good day, Arctic Forest. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, beautiful day. I mean, the weather's supposed to change again, but today it's absolutely lovely. So, make it most of it. And, uh, yeah, it's gorgeous out here. So, today, we're going to look at a skill. And the skill, basically, is about it's about travelling light and using your bushcraft skills to uh, to enable that so you can travel without, with minimal kit within reason. Uh, I'll show you what I'm carrying on me today. I've obviously, I've got my bike, I've got a jacket in there and what have you and uh, bits and pieces, bit of scran and a bit of, bit of water and what have you but as a rule today I'm carrying very minimal kit and uh, it's just about using the environment around me so on the way in I picked up this uh, hazel stave or hazel stick so looking at just over thumb thickness at the top but if you can get it thumb thickness all the way down it'd be bang on could do it being a little bit thicker down this end, but got to use what's about, and that was one of the better ones I could find on the way in. So we're going to use this stave, and we're going to make a saw. So all we're doing, we're travelling light, and by travelling light means I'm carrying minimal kit. So all I need to do, saw-wise, is carry a blade. Yep. So if I can carry a blade, it doesn't weigh weighs next to nothing. Granted, they're a bit awkward to carry. Yep. 21 inch is the sort of blade I carry. So they're a little bit awkward, uh, with a little pack like this, it sticks out, you can just see it there, it sticks out at one side, yeah? With a rucksack, you can get them in a rucksack, you can slide them down the back of the rucksack. It's ideal to have some sort of cover on the blade, which I have, or you can wrap it in some sort of cloth. I've seen them before, where people have them on the belts, inlaid into the belts and fastened in. That's a good way of carrying them. Uh, you can possibly, I'm not too sure whether you can, you, you know, if, depending how big of a, a container you have, it might do with like a 16 centimetre zebra pot or something like that, you might be able to bend it round without damaging the blade. So, but, like I say, with decent with a rucksack, you can fit it in easy. And uh, it obviously makes your load a lot lighter than carrying, or, and a lot cumbersome, you know, when you're moving through the brush and what have you. Sometimes when I've got a ball saw, I have it on my pack, fastened to my pack, but you have a tendency to catch stuff depending on what sort of terrain you're travelling through, etc, etc. But if you can make one from that, fantastic for your bushcraft, fantastic for knife skills and axe skills or, you know, whatever. Uh, you can make it just with that saw blade. We could go out just with the saw blade with nothing else and make this. I've got a Swiss Army knife on me today, so we're going to use that. We'll stick with it and I'll show you what we're going to do. All right. So kit wise, that's it. We've got the saw blade, a little bit of paracord, or you could use natural cordage. I've got my uh, Swiss Army knife, and that's all we need to make this project. Got a ferro rod there, because we might as well spark a fire up. And if you're interested, let me know. If you want one of my badges in the future at some stage, we can sort that out. That's the kit, that's all we need. We've got a 21 inch saw blade, yep, this one's got a cover on it. I've got a sack, Swiss Army knife. I've got a ferro steel, but I don't need this to make the saw, that's just going to be uh, what we're going to use. But uh, I've got a little bit of cordage, but it's not necessarily needed. You could uh, use natural cordage if you wanted to, but for sake of carrying a little bit of cordage and that blade, that is basically all you need to make this saw. So, what else do we need on top of that? We need the material. So we can't forget that bit of hazel. This is going to be our saw blade. Yeah, I mean not our saw blade, our saw frame, sorry. Yeah, this is what's going to be used to hold the blade. So, first job, I'm going to want to make my horizontal boys. So I'm going to make two of them, and I'm going to make them about yeah fingertip to halfway down my forearm ish yeah somewhere around there so I'm gonna make two cuts 
two pieces that big. So, Swiss Army knife, or like I say, if you wanted, if you had something you could wrap around the handle of this, a bit of cloth, you could use the actual saw blade to cut these as well. I'm going to use the little multi tool. Yeah, so basically, so I've got one, I'll do my second one, the same size. So we've got with two, these are going to be with end pieces, yeah. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to tidy the ends of these up. So dead simple. I'm just going to slightly, I'm not chamfering them, I'm just taking the edges off them. You don't have to do it, what I mean. I did that before when I uh, cut the piece down on that side. Don't have to do it, but like I say, it is good practice doing this whenever you've got a piece, even if it's a peg, temp peg or anything. It's just, uh, that chamfer just gives it a little bit of extra sh strength as well if you're hammering on it or anything like that. But it just tidies it up nice anyway. So we've got them two pieces. So there were them pieces. So what we're going to have to do now with these is we're going to have to make a cut in the end. This is where the saw blade is going to be located. So I'm looking for the fattest end of them both. That's pretty similar both ends that. I think that's the fattest end. Yeah, what's that one like? Do you know, I might make it an end of them two, they're, they're two joins, they're, they're the same size. So, we're going to make a slot in the end of both of them. Yep, yeah. let's do it. Be really careful when you're doing this. I mean, even these little Swiss Army knives, they soon make a mess of you. Last thing you want to do is jump out and cut your hand. So you've just be, got to be really careful. Sometimes it's not a bad way. It's not a bad thing to put another piece of wood in between yourself and the cut. So if some reason I do jump out, I'm going to cut that instead of me. Now depth wise, <clears throat> I'm going to want to go, you're probably not too bad at that, but I'm going to go a little bit further. I want to go about, about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. So now we've got my notches cut. Man out Billy, come on, that's it, good boy. So now we've got my notches cut. So we're going to have a saw blade there. I'm going to have the other end in there. I'm going to use the outside hole for my pin. Yeah, so I've got one there, one there. Yeah. Pretty much perfect, that. 
So now we need a middle piece. So depending where you put it depends how big a round of wood you can cut. Yeah. So if I'm thinking I'm only going to want to cut stuff about five inch me max. So I'm looking at anywhere from here upwards is going to be my cross point. Yeah. So I'm going to say I'm going to put mine about there. Yeah. So I'm just going to measure the length of me. Uh, me cut and I'm gonna I'm gonna chamfer it in so I'm gonna gonna wanna go about a third of the way through that side a third of the way through that side so I'm gonna cut that one about here so that's gonna be me cut for that let's get that one done first right so let's cut them notches out and the trick is obviously get them as in line as you can with your slot at the top but also, we want the male and female parts to match as best we can, yeah? So the male, female part on this one, the male part on that one, and I want them to match as best they can. The snugger the fit, the stronger the saw. The less wobble you're gonna get when you use it. And if you get a real snug fit, honestly, you'll get minimal, minimal wobble. Be bang on. Right, let's cut some of them out. All I'm doing is I'm rotating it. I'm taking a piece, constantly taking a little notch out. A little piece out, you see it there. Yeah, one after the other. And then bearing in mind how thick your stick is coming across, you might need to make your notch steeper or deeper a sharper edge Just making this one a bit steeper. That's a good depth. Yep. Yeah. Don't want to go too far. We definitely don't want to go to halfway or past halfway. Yep. Yeah. That's about a bit more than a third. Something like that. A third would probably do it. That's that side. Put my mark on this one. My little saw cut. Sorry, that's my cross piece. Good job I didn't do that one. Put for my saw cut on this one. There we are. There's my little saw cut. So same again on this side. Keep swapping it around. And we'll beaver chew the way through to a nice little depth. Just slightly adjust it to make sure it's, take a bit more off that side. Because what it's gotta be, it's gotta be in line with that slot, yeah. That's looking pretty good, that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's another one done. So now, this is a bit, we've got to match this end up to that end. So that's got a slot in there, yeah. Don't matter with this first one. You shouldn't really cut in the middle of your legs, but I'm just, you see me move that left leg well out of the way then. Yep. As a rule, you should try and cut to the side of you. Yeah. 
away from any 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 veins or any main arteries or anything like that. You've got a main artery in the middle of the leg here. So I never really cut. I mean, I shoved my leg well out of the way then, didn't I? Because I knew what I was going to be doing. I was aware of it. But, yeah, always, always be careful. Never let your guard down. Get in there. So once the notches are in, yeah, and these are cut to fit, yeah. Now we want a little notch on the top. This is where your cordage is going to be, which is going to pull that out, which is going to lock that bottom blade, yeah. So on the opposite side to that, cut yourself another notch in the top. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just a nice notch. I always make it about about an inch, inch and a half from the top. Same again. Be careful of your fingers. Once you get it going, you're not so bad. And if you just were using your saw blade, you could just cut a little bit of a notch in it or a groove. I mean, these are great little projects. At the end of the day, bushcraft, the clue's in the name, isn't it? It's a bit of crafting in the bush. So, anything you can do out here, making stuff, it's all fantastic. Definitely part of the hobby, isn't it? And, like, and when you get proficient at these, you can knock them together in half an hour. You know, maybe quicker than that. So if you're out for a two or three day camp or whatever you're out for, even even just a day, a full day job. And there's definitely a little bit of uh, satisfaction in making and using your own bit of kit 100% if you cut it on the wrong side just happen to cut it out of this you know what I mean, it's easy done, I've done that before <coughs> yeah sometimes you just start chilling out don't you listening to the birds and you forget, you know what I mean as long as you don't forget what you're doing with knife though yeah Always got to keep your wits about you when you're using tools, aren't you? Especially if you're uh, <coughs> you're out in any remote areas. Yeah, think twice, cut once. Bit like the old measurement thing in it, measure twice, cut once. So there, put a notch on that side, put your other notch on that side there, there, one there, one there. So there, we're getting the blade. So all we need now, we need a pin at this side, a pin at that side, to hold that in place, cordage across the top, which is going to pull this in, yeah. So we're going to need a piece of wood that's going to use as the windlass to tighten it all up. So I'm going to use this piece. I could do with being a bit shorter if I wanted, but that's not too bad. So I'm going to take a little bit off the top, and you don't have to. You could just basically wrap it round the string with nothing. But I'm going to make a little hole in inside there. Yep, just something I just like to do. But you don't need to, you can just wrap it round. So first job, I'm going to take a little bit off top of this and then I'm going to make a little hole about, about there. 
inside me, inside it. So I'll make a mark there. Yeah. Make a mark there. Get shot of a little bit off the top. the job. I want to make a little all in there. Yeah. So to make the hole, all I'm going to use I'm going to use the all to start it on the Swiss Army knife. Gonna drill that right through. Me through that way. Run it back through the other way to open that side up. That might be big enough for me paracord, we shall see. If not, I'll open it up. Let's have a look. Gonna end up de sheathing it that. Oh you bugger. Let's try that. It pork through. There we are. So now that's going to be in the middle. I'm going to have one that's going to go around this way. Yep, yeah. one around that way, and then. I'm going to tie them off about here, so I know approximately how to tie it off there. Yep, so I'm going to tie that, I'm going to tie that up now. Yep, I know that that's a pretty good length of string. And I don't need to do out fancy on ends here. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little overhand knot in the end here. Fasten them both together like that. There. That should do the job, that. Yeah, pretty confident that that'll do the job. So now, we need some pins for these. Now I look for two options. Hardwood is a good option. Or a little bit of greenwood here, this shoot. So I'm pretty certain this shoot is going to do me fine. Yeah, I quite like to use U if I can. If I can find a bit of hardwood, a bit of U, something like something that's uh, it's one of my favourite woods to use for it. But I'm happy that this is going to do the job. 
trim that off a bit like that trim that side off a little bit and this is going to make a pin for either side so we're right with that good job won't it absolutely a bobby dazzler right so we're in let's have a look to get my pins finish them off a little bit make it a bit nice on end that be about you don't need to go mad on length but it don't matter as long as they go through yeah let's have a look sometimes you're better having them uh, tapered so you can push them through and then they lock but it's not critical they'll hold anyway when it's under tension I've got one there. Let's have a look. Get this side on. Yeah, got a pin either side there. If it's something you're keeping. You can make them as uh, as fluffy as you want. Even carve a little wizard in on it if you want. So get that over there. Pull that over there. Just make sure these are lined up. Nice, yeah. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna use this windlass to tighten it all up. Yeah, hiya Billy. Yeah, you're a good lad. Nah, that's it way, man. Just hold it steady. Keep winding. We'll get it nice and under tension. Yeah. Keep going. I mean, I could have even, that might have been better, slightly shorter, that cord you jump windless. Well, there we are. And we're in. We're solid. That's what we saw. Yeah. So there we are. That's your box saw. Yeah. Just carrying the blade in. Nice little block saw knocked up, nice and light. You know, perfect really, perfect around camp. Right, I reckon we put it through its paces. What do you reckon? Let's do it. Do it one more. Make sure you don't let go of that, smack yourself on the chin. Look at that. It's a Bobby Dazzler. Right, let's get it rattled up, let's have a look. I need to stop saying Bobby Dazzler as well.
Absolutely brilliant bit of kit. Half an hour to make. And when you finish week round camp, just hang it up and get on with some of your other jobs. Found the perfect piece, so it seems rude not to uh, finish on a few feather sticks, doesn't it? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, when you're grobbling around and you find a good bit. I'll rattle a few of these off, eh? The power of a Swiss Army knife. Nice bunch of feathers. Even though it was a pretty perfect piece of wood. But every now and then, it's all good stuff in it. Got to practice, haven't you? But eh. Uh, And running beautiful well yeah thanks for joining us rick t outdoor adventure and billy dog in the forest we've had a great uh wander we're gonna go for a better wander after this and i uh, get around forest a bit more and uh route lake get billy have a bit of a swim and everything but uh get beat a few feathers anyway yeah thanks for joining us and uh i hope you enjoyed that build uh, dead quick and easy, definitely worth doing. A definite advantage to carry just a blade instead of the full thing, uh, weight wise and uh, size wise and everything else. And uh, it works really well. So have a do at that if you've never done it before. But uh, if you're not a subscriber, do us a favour and click that button and subscribe and uh, keep watching for more of our vids. We're always out and about. And to all me uh, followers, thanks for sticking with us and uh, great to see you all again. Alright, look after yourselves and we'll catch you real soon. See you later. Ta-da.